Take a look at number two, for example. So we have 44a squared and 11a. So our first job would be to figure out what the greatest common factor is for the numbers. Take care of the numbers first, then go after the letters. All right. Just like in the last unit, you don't have to write it, but you should always have it in mind. If you have a variable that's just written all by its lonesome, you have to consider that as a variable raised to the first power. All right. So we're going to look at this and say greatest common factor for the numbers. So I'm looking at 44 and 11. This is a pretty straightforward one because if I ask you what is the largest number that divides evenly into 44 and 11, you probably don't need to go to a calculator in order to say that that number is 11. All right, 11 divides into 11, obviously, but it also divides into 44, all right? The greatest common factor numerically cannot be larger than the smallest number that you have in the set, all right? So it's always a good idea to check the smallest number to see if it divides into all the other numbers. Like, for example, I mean, you're, you're looking at number five right below on the big screen here. The smallest number in the set there is six, check to see if that divides evenly into 18 and 24. It does, so you're good, you got it, all right? Now, when it comes to the variables, all you're gonna do is look across the line, find each variable, in this case there's only one, and pull the variable that's raised to the lowest power, all right? The lowest power here is one, So we're going to pull the a to the first, all right? It's weird because the term is greatest common factor, but we're generally almost always looking for the smallest of something, smallest number, smallest exponent. It, it seems like a contradiction, but it's not because the common part of it allows it all to make sense. Right? It's got to be the greatest, but it also has to be in common between all the numbers. If I expand this out, a squared is the same as saying a times a. a to the first is the same as saying a. What's in common? Only a single solitary a. All right, That's the only match that we have from the two sets. All right, So that's the concept of the GCF. Now we have to go the next step and actually factor it out. Factoring and dividing are the same idea. All right? So in order to create factors, you find your GCF and divide your expression by that GCF. All right? So each term here, I have the 44a squared and the 11a to the first, each of those get divided by the 11a to the first. All right, if I asked you what is, or what are two factors of 48? You'd probably say, all right, well, I know two is one of them. What's the other one? 48 divided by two, oh, 24. How'd you figure that out? You took the 48 and divided it by two, and then you paired those two results together as factors creating the product. All right. So whatever I get as a result here needs to get multiplied by the 11a to the first. 11a to the first multiplied by whatever this result is will give us our two sets of factors. Well, one set of two factors. All right. So I go by the numbers first. 44 divided by 11. That's easy. That's just a 4. Now when it comes to the variables, I'm taking a to the second and dividing it by a to the first. You can look at that one of two ways. You can kind of look at it on the side and say, all right, I got a times a divided by just an a. Well, okay, well, a divided by a is one. 
leaving you with just an A. Or we can use the reverse of the process that we used when multiplying expressions. When we multiplied monomials, we kept the base and add the exponents. Kept the base and added the exponents. Here we're dividing, so let's just do the opposite. Keep the base and subtract the exponents. All right, two minus one is one, four a to the first power. So nifty little shortcut. All right, 11 divided by 11 is one. If you keep the base and subtract the exponents, you get a to the zeroth power. Anything to the zeroth power is equal to one. So it's irrelevant, it cancels. Cancels as in you multiply a number by one and, and that number is not changed. All right, so this is just gonna be 4a to the first if you want, but 4a plus one, all right? If you expand it out, you'd be saying, all right, well, what is a divided by a? Anything divided by itself is one. You'd look at it that way too, all right? Now I mentioned number five. <clears throat> Numerically, the GCF is going to be 6. We have to take care of the variables also. Going across the line, I'm just, I only see one variable. N has to be raised to the lowest power that I see across the line. All right, N to the first power. All right, so 6 N to the first. Now, th this is numerically it's not bad right 6 18 and 24 those are pretty easy numbers to work with but let's say you didn't recognize the GCF and you look at this and say oh there's three of them now so what do I do you work with them two at a time all right so I take the 6 GCD 6 and 18 it'll give me the GCD between those two numbers then I take that answer and compare it to the third number all right, so the answer to the first two as a GCD was six. Take that six, compare it to the 24. All right, so I pop in the 24 and I get the six that way. All right, so you can work with, I mean, it'd be complicated, but if you had like an array of 10 numbers, first two, get that answer, compare it to the third, get that answer, compare it to the fourth, get that answer, compare it to the fifth, and so on until you get to the tenth number. All right. So then what we're gonna do here is take the sixth n to the sixth, 18 n to the fourth, and 24 n to the first, and divide each term by six n to the first. Six n to the first would then be multiplied by whatever that result is, and that would be our set of factors. All right, so we go by the numbers first. Six divided by six is one. Then we take care of the variables. Keep the base, subtract the exponents. All right, so n to the fifth. Plus 18 divided by six is three. Then we take care of the variables, keep the base, subtract the exponents, n to the third, minus 24 divided by six, four, keep the base, subtract the exponents, n to the zeroth, n to the zeroth is one, no change there, so we disregard. And so our 6n to the first, or just 6n, multiplied by that trinomial would be the factored form of the 6n to the sixth plus 18n to the fourth minus 24n to the first. All right. So let's do number seven to finish up. And it's got two variables in it, a little spicier. But it's the same idea. I mean, you could have 20 variables in a problem. It's, it's still the same strategy, all right? So we take, or we take a look anyway, at the numbers, three, nine, and 12. You ask yourself, can I think of a number that will divide evenly into the, those three available numbers? The three, the nine, and, and the 12. Three, three gets the job done. 
I always look at the fir- the smallest number. I, I mentioned this before. I look at the smaller the smallest number in the set and see if that is the GCF. All right? Does it divide evenly into the uh, the other values? Yes. Then I got it. No. Then I start looking for something else. Right? In this case, it's three. I have two variables. I have a G and an H. Across the line. I see I have h to the first power. My process tells me to take the smallest power for each variable. So h to the first is the smallest power, so I'm going to pull that. But for the g's, I have a g to the, the third, g to the second, and then the last term doesn't have a g at all. All right, well, it does. It has a secret g, g to the zeroth power. All right, so every variable is accounted for in each term, but I'd look at it and say, all right, well, g to the zeroth, what does that really amount to? Well, that's the same as saying one. So it's not going to affect any change. All right, so I'm looking at 3g to the third, h to the first, minus 9g to the second, h to the first, plus 12h to the first, g to the zeroth, each term divided by 3g to the 0th h to the 1st. And you may look at it and say, well, I'm not going to put the 3g, uh, I'm not going to put the g to the 0th in there because it's really just a 1 anyway. I like to put it in there because it's a reminder of the whole keep the base, subtract the exponent idea for every single term. All right? every, vari every variable in every term. All right, so and then, you know we simplify it after the fact, but at least going through the process, it's not a bad idea to have it there. All right, so three divided by three, one irrelevant, three minus zero, three. So g to the third is coming into my solution here. One minus one. 0, h to the 0th is 1, irrelevant. Nine divided by three, three. Two minus zero, two, so g to the second. One minus one, zero, h to the 0th is one. One multiplied by anything remains the anything that it started as, so irrelevant. All right. 12 divided by 3, 4, we have a positive sign here that comes along for the ride. All right. A little juxtaposition of the, the variables, but 0 minus 0 is still going to give you a 0, irrelevant. 1 minus 1 is going to give you a 0, irrelevant. And so it's just a four. And so this would be a factored form, except I'd probably want to clean it up because you know, you know how those multiple choice questions work. I'll give you an answer in, you know, whatever form makes sense to whoever wrote the question to me. So it might not look exactly the same as you have it on paper. So three G to the zero, G to the zero is one. This is really 3h g cubed minus 3g squared plus 4. And that would be our final for that.